Yo, what is going on guys and welcome back to another video and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how I created this day to night transition instead of after effects. So to start out, obviously you're going to need two different clips to transition from. So I just have this footage of this house here that is shot on a drone, obviously. And what we're going to do is align these clips as best as possible so that it's almost like a seamless transition from these uh, two different shots. So what I like to do to kind of see the two different shots is just hitting T on the keyboard to bring up the opacity. I'm going to bring this down to like 60%. And now when you just drag this clip over your daytime shot, you're just going to see the nighttime footage barely on the screen there. And basically what we're trying to do is find a frame in this nighttime shot that aligns best with the daytime shot. So as you can see, as I scroll through here, honestly around like here looks best. So what I'm now going to do is hit a marker on both these layers you can just right click this and then go to markers and add marker so now that we have those two frames lined up what we can do is on that nighttime shot hit s on your keyboard to scale it up because on this shot you can see that buildings and everything are a bit smaller so i'm just scaling it up here and we can drag this footage so it almost aligns with that daytime shot so here's the daytime and there's the nighttime as you can see Honestly, it is pretty close. Another effect we can add to this is corner pin, and we can just bring this onto that nighttime shot. Let's bring the opacity back down to 60%. And with this corner pin, you can drag the different values here. So the upper left, you can drag these to kind of help warp the image to align better with the daytime shot. So after adjusting a few of these parameters here and this corner pin, you can see the before and after. It's pretty subtle, but it does warp this building quite a bit and aligns it more with the daytime footage. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that. So now what we can do is bring this opacity back up to 100%. Once again, what you can do is just toggle this on and off really quick to see how that transition is looking. Let's go ahead and trim our layer down on that nighttime layer all the way to where we want that transition to start. So now when you play that back, you can actually see you have a pretty decent transition already. I'm also just gonna trim down that daytime shot so it aligns with that nighttime one. Now we're gonna add a bit of a speed ramp to this. So right now you can see it's just a pretty constant speed here. Same with the end shot. So by hitting Control Alt T, we'll open up the timer mapping and we're gonna set a keyframe right here at the end of our daytime shot. So just hit this little keyframe here and then go to the start, set a keyframe there. So now we have two keyframes and I honestly think this shot is a bit too slow. I feel like it could be sped up quite a bit. So what we can do is drag our first frame here over quite a bit, honestly, maybe halfway like this and then trim down the footage. So it's back to where that keyframe is. I'm just going to select this footage and bring it back over to the start of my timeline here. Now what we can do is select these keyframes and hit F9 on your keyboard to easy ease them, or you can just right click them and go to keyframe assistant, easy ease. Then let's go into the graph editor and we're going to create a graph where it slowly ramps up so pretty much if you don't know the graph that well then just copy what i'm doing here now let's go ahead and play that back with that timer map and as you can see it starts out slow and then slowly speed ramps up and if the footage is still too slow what you can do is actually go into the timer map here and on that first frame you can drag the timer map down so it's revealing more of that footage before that keyframe so now we have an even faster clip here so once you have something you like, you can just go ahead and exit out of that graph. And we're basically just going to do that same thing for the nighttime shot now. So once again, control alt T, bring up the timer mapping, set a keyframe at the start. And we actually already have a keyframe at the end here. So we do not have to actually set one. So let's just go ahead and select these F9 and then go into the graph editor. And then we're going to basically copy that same kind of graph, but pretty much the opposite. So, so basically it's going to be starting up super quick and then slowly speed ramping out. Now we can play this back from the start. And as you can see, we actually have a pretty smooth transition already just by using those two different speed ramps. I also like to enable frame blending for these two different layers. So, so by clicking this little square here twice, we'll enable frame blending. And we're just going to do that for both of those different layers. The next thing we're going to do is drag out our nighttime shot back over to the left. And it looks like I'm for some reason dragging the marker, but you just want to drag the layer out. So it overlays over your daytime shot. If that makes sense. So. I'm just going to go over a few frames here. This is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's just go 10 frames. And you might even notice on those frames that we just added, it's actually frozen and the video is not even playing. So to fix that, just hit U on your keyboard and then go to the start of where you just added those new frames and then click the stopwatch on the timer map. And if you open up the graph editor on the timer mapping, you can see the line here is straight up just flat. So obviously it's not going to play anything. <laughs> so to fix that, you want to go into the timer map and drag this down. You can see it's just expanding that graph. We're gonna smooth out these keyframes. 
and now we have our video playing back. So now that that is fixed, we can go ahead and apply our Luma fade. So, so in the effects and presets, just search up Luma key and bring this onto here. And at the start of the clip, we're going to go into the threshold, set a keyframe and bring that all the way up to, I think it is, yeah, 255 and then go to the end, or I guess where that transition is supposed to happen. So on that marker, bring our threshold down to zero and we can even add a bit of a feather to this. So I'm going to do like 20. So once we have that done, I'm just going to go ahead and select these two different layers and then right click it and hit pre-compose as well as just check this and then hit OK. And what I'm actually going to apply is some warp stabilizer. As you can see, if I play this back really quick, you can see it's pretty shaky. So let's go into the effects and presets and search up warp stabilizer and just bring that onto our pre-compose layer. All right, so the warp stabilizer just got done and let's go ahead and play that back. As you can see, it's already a lot smoother, but right here it low-key kind of messes up i don't know what happened it like zooms in and rotates so i guess it wanted to add in its own shake which is kind of interesting but let's just go ahead and bring the smoothness down to like 20 percent maybe 50 percent was just a bit too strong now since it's already adding its own shake we might as well just add our own as well now like i say in pretty much all of my other videos you can go ahead and apply whatever shake you want to use but obviously i'm going to be using my shake because i mean i might be biased here but i think it's the easiest and fastest way to add shakes to your videos so what we're going to do is align this adjustment layer that i just created to where we want the shake to start so let's bring the start of the adjustment layer like right here and then make sure motion blur is enabled on adjustment layer and we can go into our effects and presets animation presets and then my shake presets so let's go ahead and use one of the shake ins and honestly i'm just going to apply shake one and see how this looks and yeah that definitely makes it a hundred times better it just helps smooth out the whole entire transition in general and adds a little bit more energy to the effect but yeah if you want to go ahead and use my shake presets i'll have them linked down in the description below there's tons of different presets that you can just drag and drop let's go ahead and try another one just for fun let's try the shake wine rotate Honestly, that's also a super clean shake. Maybe even just the shake Y will look cool in this. So let's go ahead and apply that one on here. And yeah, that one actually looks super sick. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave that shake on for this example. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this effect. Obviously, there's a lot of different ways you can go about creating this, but this is kind of the style and method I like to go about doing this. So if you found this video helpful, then make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.